Uh, Victoria was the kind of person who, who never really wanted to, to worry anyone. So she was very, very considerate, and she was always looking out for each other's um, feelings. And I think that's one of the main reasons why she didn't fully uh, come out and share what she was going through because she didn't want any of us to be concerned or worried. And I think a lot of people feel like that sometimes. I feel like Victoria was just wise beyond her years. And even though she was, you know, 18, she's always been an old soul. She always loved these uh, like oldies music, had vintage records, very, very talented individual. Like she just excelled at everything she did. She would bake amazing cheesecakes every time that um, me or Christian or Bruno fought and we'd come home and she'd, we'd, she was there at the airport just like with this big cheesecake for us. <laughs> That's the kind of person she was. Yeah, very close. When Ava was born, me and Bruno decided that we wanted Victoria to be um, the godmother. <laughs> yeah, so Ava would call um, Victoria godma. That feeling of missing her doesn't go away. That's the hardest part, is that I don't think that will ever fully go away. Um, but we do our best, you know, to keep living life and keep her memory alive. It's hard because my daughter Ava, she's still so young, but I do my best to show her photos and videos and just keep talking about, you know, Victoria and what she was like so that she can hold on to some kind of a memory of her. One of my favorite memories with Victoria was actually, we were in Singapore for one of my fights. I think it might have been in um, 2018. It's funny because every May and November we would have fights in Singapore. There was the fight on May 18th, the day after her birthday, May 17th. We were staying at this hotel and I wanted to do something special for her so I arranged with the hotel to just put some balloons in her room and have like a cake and she opened the door and she was like so surprised and she was like speechless and she's like did you do this? And I was like, yeah. And she was just so happy, you know, and I'm just so glad um, she deserves all of those, all of those special moments. It's been six years now since I was in a very dark place, feeling very alone. I felt like I was dealing with a lot of pressure. And at the same time, I feel like I couldn't speak up about it or say anything to anyone. And so that resulted in me you know, purposely crashing my car and leaving it in fate's hand to see you know, what happens next to me. And I just, didn't really care at that point. Speaking up about this, about what you're going through, it's the hardest part that you're gonna do. But it's the first step to this long road ahead of truly just being able to live life. And I think that suicide and mental illness and mental health, it's something that affects all of us in some way or some sort, but it's something that nobody wants to talk about because it's uncomfortable, because there's a stigma around it still so much. The first thing that we can do is, is open up, and I know how difficult that is. I decided to speak up about it now because starting this organization, I think that it's on me to step up and share that vulnerability with others if I'm going to be that voice that says, 
hey, um, your story matters and it's important and it can help someone else, then I need to take that first step. And I'm finally at a place now where I'm okay to do that.